Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's time to discuss the Nigerian Senate and Akwabio dismisses impeachment plot against him. Senate President Godswill Akpabio dismissed rumors of an impeachment plot against him, stating that the Senate remains united and peaceful during plenary. Reports of the Department of State Services DSS presence at the National Assembly complex fueled speculations about the plot, allegedly driven by some northern senators dissatisfied with President Tinubu. Akpabio referred to the fake news to well referred that the fake news to the Senate Committee on Special Duties for Investigation, instructing them to report back within 24 hours. This is the second time an impeachment rumor has surfaced against Akpabio, though senators and the Senate spokesperson have consistently denied any such plot. Now joining us to discuss this is Dr. Ambrose Igboke, is a political analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So, as they say, there sure. is no smoke. As they say, there is no smoke without fire. And if this is a rumor, I mean, it has happened before. We've heard this before, and this is the second time that we're hearing of this rumor. Can we get your take on what's happening in the National Assembly, and maybe if this might be true? But they're just trying to look for a way to put it on the wraps. Well, I tried to listen to the main news channels like you yesterday, and uh, it was not uh, highlighted. Uh, most of the stations just show uh, the normal you know, session of the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we say in the media, um, there is uh, what you call the grapevine. Yes. And grapevine is a very, very solid source of um, uh, news in, uh, in the media. So we don't throw away a uh, grapevine or rumor when we hear them. We try to investigate them, as you said, uh, there's no smoke without fire. Exactly. Having said that, those who were uh, old enough to remember, uh, between 1999 to 2007, uh, we had five Senate presidents. And each one, from Evan Ewerem um, to Evans Ewerem, I mean, the the problem with some of these things, to just uh, maybe age, uh, the first Senate president in 1999 was said to be whether it was Evan or Evans. And there were some discrepancies in his uh, documentation and the rest. And uh, that led to his impeachment. And then we had the Chubaka people. We had so different people were having reasons for the uh, impeach. Uh, so, but that stabilized uh, after after a period. That was a tumultuous period in the Senate. Stabilized after um, Yara uh, Jonathan came in. Um, so, but overall, the Senate has not... Um, Apart from uh, the stint that uh, Dr. Bukala Saraki had, uh, where the Senate were actually was truly independent and stood up against, uh, you know, some policies of the executive, uh, the current Senate from the time of uh, Ahmed Lawan to uh, Akbabio has not really uh, mostly. That they are just robbers. Uh, some people feel that they are rubber stamp Senate. Some people have accused them of, uh, you know, allowing anything that the executive sent in to just go in. Uh, some people have, allow, uh, you know, accused them of not being the alternative uh, voice. Uh, because the essence of having three, tier, um, three arms of government is for, you know, uh, checkmating uh, one uh, uh, arm of government, especially the executive, so that they don't become dictatorial. Mm -hmm. uh, that is how democracy was uh, planned, so that the judiciary can check up the can check out uh, uh, the uh, executive. The same way the executive they can check out the excesses of uh, both the judiciary and uh, the legislature. The legislature also has a duty to check both by making the laws. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but a, a lot of uh, policies have gone on. A lot of uh, laws have gone on. A lot of um, even some um, executive policies that don't uh, go well with the people. And the difference between the executive cabinet and the legislature is that the executive, repres uh, apart from the president and the vice president at the federal level, the rest of them are, are appointees. So they, they, they don't really represent the people at the executive council. It's just the president and the vice that were voted for. Unlike the uh, uh, legislature. Legislature is the only arm out of the three arms of government that we are truly the representatives of the people and the strictest said that every member there was voted in every member then is voted in by 
There are various constituencies, both as a federal constituent and as a senatorial district. So they are supposed to be accountable to the people. They are supposed to reflect the, wish, the wishes of the people, the will of the people. They are the only three arms that, uh, that does that. The rest, uh, executive and uh, the legislature, uh, I mean the judiciary, does not even have anything to do with the people. And so those ones can just uh, be left on their own. They are they're, they're own, they are appointed, the people don't know them, uh, you know, they are, people, they are too detached from the people. But when it comes to the legislator, every member there is. So they are supposed to voice, to be the voice of the people. This senator has not been doing that. And uh, maybe that is why these uh, rumors keep, uh, uh, you know, coming out. And But uh, as of yesterday, the Senate has denied it. No member of the Senate has come out to say that it happened. Um, the, the Senate president himself denied it. He, he, he said that it is for trending, that the people who posted that just wanted their website or blog to trend. Uh, we, we keep watching. Uh, these are the way rumors came up uh, between 1999 and 2007 that uh, these things keep happening. But for this to leak, up, leak out and for it to have this proportion of visibility, uh, as we say, there's no smoke without fire. That's right. So um, according to what the report says, it says some northern governors are, you know, dissatisfied with the you know the current administration of the president and of course this might just be a rumor but what are some challenges that you would say the senate is facing right now and maybe not just even the senate the house uh, of the house of representatives as a whole the national assembly as a whole uh, the the, uh, the problem we have had in nigeria is that we um when it comes to politics we we'll try to divide or become sentimental across uh, religious line, across ethnic lines, across sectional interests. And that's what has played out. Eight years of Buhari was a disaster, but the North kept quiet. And then, um, so far, the one and a half years of Tinubu has been more disaster, especially when it affects the, what we're talking about, how it affects the economy of the citizens and how the citizens are faring in their socioeconomic life. So it has become worse. Now, um, before the APC took over in 2015, ABT was a very formidable uh, opposition, always tackling uh, uh, the uh, you know, governorship, uh, presidency of the rule of Jonathan. Uh, we remember when uh, Good Life Jonathan muted the idea of removing first subsidy in 2012. They mobilized uh, what they called the Save Nigeria Group, and then uh, you know, they came together, a coalition of CSOs, and that was thwarted. So it's surprising that uh, so, some years later, uh, the same people came forward and removed uh, first subsidy. Um, so while uh, Buhari was having its clannish government, where basically appointments were skewed towards the north, the north kept quiet. And that is the disaster of keeping quiet when the wrong things are being done. So what happened? It gave uh, Tinobu the impetus also, when he came in, to be begun to, uh, to, com to continue from where uh, Buhari stopped, where federal character is being thrown uh, out of the window, uh, where represent, uh, federal representations and appointments are no longer, you know, uh, important. Where we saw what Obasanjo did between 1999 to 2017, when he even had hunted, you know, credible Nigerians, professionals, even people who are not uh, politicians, people who are not in political parties. But that has been jettisoned. What we will see now is that uh, if you are not a party member, Mm. Then you are not even, uh, you know, appointed. So that that is the disaster we are witnessing now. And when you have such, there tend to be uh, disgruntledness. There tend to be um, issues here and there, especially among the representative. As I said earlier, the National Assembly is representative to the people, but it should not be seen as a north northern thing. Mm. So it is not being seen that everybody is feeling the pinch of uh, of what is going on. Look at the inflation that has happened over over time. Some have been driven very far. Um, as at the time uh, uh, Tinubu took over uh, 29th May uh, last year, uh, we know how much, let's even use the ordinary things we do. For example, a bag of rice. By December uh, 2022, we know how much we bought 50 kg bag of rice. It was barely 50,000, uh, uh, 40,000 naira, uh, 30,000, 30, 30 something thousand. Now, it has, it has uh, almost tripled. Uh, cost of uh, fuel, how much we buy fuel that time, how much we pay for electricity. So these things are how it's characterized the first on Nigeria in terms of inflation, in terms of uh, uh, industries are closing up, especially small scale industries, hunger is in the land, and those people are normal. So it's, it's something that concerns the whole uh, country. And 
if they're not playing, playing it as an ethnic or sectional politics, then uh, it is the condition Nigerians are, are has been trivialized to mean uh, sectional politics. So um, if these things are uh, the rumors we are hearing, then there should be concession across across the board. There's no Nigerian who is truly not part of the uh, people who are making it because of the suffering of the people are happy that uh, what Nigerians are suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, people can no longer pay salary. A lot of industries cannot even run. They have closed shop. People are leaving the country. You know, so uh, it is not a, a good time for Nigeria for anybody to start playing sectional politics. Everybody is hungry. Everybody, we will tell everybody. We talk to a majority of the people. Uh, I mean, uh, people uh, people are dropping their cars and trekking. Uh, people can even come to major cities and towns now. The number of cars on the road have reduced. The government has not provided alternative means for transportation. So uh, things are so tough. People can hardly even eat. And uh, so it is not about uh, sectional politics. And so what has the, uh, apart from House of Reps, that make some statements, uh, maybe to reverse the first uh, yeah. uh, pump price and some other things. The Senate, over the time, has not really come out to defend Nigeria. So ni the Nigerians are very disappointed uh, in the Senate under uh, Gosula Kwabi. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's why many people have called it a rubber stamp uh, uh, Senate. Uh, so, and it's, uh, it's a very unfortunate that they're supposed to represent the people. But now, they're acting as if they are appointees of the executive. Mm -hmm. They are not ministers of the Federal Republic who are appointed at the pleasure of the president. Every member in the Senate, every member in the House of Reps, is not appointed by anybody, but elected by his or her own people. And so, they should be beholden to the constituencies and districts. Exactly what I was going to ask, because um, I was going to ask about the executive legislative relationship, because it seems as though, um, you know, the Senate now feels we're part of the executive, whatever the executive does will ride with it. But forgetting that they have constituents back home that they are supposed to be answerable to, they're supposed to be accountable to. But with that being said, Godswell Akpabi obviously has said, um, you know, the Senate is united. There is, these are just rumors and, you know, what have you. But how do you think that um, if some people now are saying that, President Tinubu's administration, they're dissatisfied with it. How do you think on every front, everyone needs to come up and start to talk about it? That's everyone in the Senate, not just the select few, because of course, like you rightly said, we're all feeling the brunt of it. If they know that they're accountable to certain people, they definitely need to do what is right by those people. So how can we champion that cause right now as Nigerians? I think the major problem with the Nigerian citizenry is that they don't even know um, the powers uh, that is domiciled as a citizen or as a people who are of a senatorial zone. Um, we feel that it's practically impossible to uh, recall a senator. A senator can be recalled. Wow. A House of Reps can be recalled. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, when you tell the people this, oh, they say, no, it's very difficult to do. So what do you think? Oh, you want a political class to make a law that makes you you make it easy for them to be recalled. Nobody does that. We are all human beings, and we have what we call self-preservation, uh, you know, princess. So uh, people cannot uh, sit down in their place, and your senator is misbehaving somewhere, and you say, oh, he's doing great, he's not representing you, and you have not even initiated the call. Uh, so if we, nobody, uh, very few people have tried it, uh, and uh, it didn't work. But I remember when it was tried on some senators, the senators were very shaken, and I think they sat up. So, but uh, our senators and, um, uh, you know, they are so relaxed because uh, their people can't even, um, you know, call them. You know, you are accountable to the people. How many people in the district have called them and said, look, we want to see you. We, don't, we are not uh, happy with what you're doing. What have you done? Rather, we have some people who are busy defending them. We have people who, even in their own district, are beholden to them. And then they fling back surprise at you, Christmas and Easter uh, and uh, uh, Easter, mm. and then uh, do some little empowerment program, medical outreach, uh, share bags of uh, rice, and that is it. Um, so uh, it, it is not representation. Mm. So we need, because representation also means that you do some bills and some uh, that will have become law that will be able to help your uh, people grow. So, and then it also means that when there are obnoxious policies from the executive, that you challenge, you challenge it on behalf of your people. But well, this has not been, uh, been, been done in this uh, uh, Senate at all. Uh, therefore, it is time for the constituents of that uh, these people represent to start calling them to order. 
Why have you not challenged? Why have you not called the uh, the uh, MD of NNPC, mm. um, Minister for State for Pension, to start asking why are you increasing this? Mm. When the fight between Dangote and the uh, NNPC was going on, why have you not led an investigative pilot to Dangote and said, okay, how much? Tell us how much you want to sell this uh, uh, petrol, petrol, PMS, so that we know. And then they can ask someone at NNPC and say, okay, Dangote has said you can sell, but they left uh, the whole thing there, and NNPC didn't intimidate Dangote with pricing. Uh, so these are not for the good of the people. And now the NNPC came out with a template uh, that is, uh, they want to sell retail hmm. at 1,065 And IPMA is complaining that what they want to even sell at retail is higher than, uh, it's, uh, higher than uh, what they want to sell for them as, uh, as IPMA. So you can see the whole economy is in tatters. Nobody is saying anything. Uh, so uh, that means they are not actually representing the interest of their people. Because if they do, they will not leave the uh, executive to run riot with all kinds of uh, uh, voodoo economics that they are practicing right now. Imagine mm -hmm. somebody uh, representing the state coming to say that Nigerians will pay more for electricity, minister for power. Mm -hmm. So siding, uh, siding the people who are, you know, who the capitalists. I keep saying, I keep saying that no country all over the world hands out its, uh, the welfare of its citizens to capitalists. Capitalists are businessmen. What drives them is only profit. And no government does that. And that's why there are regulatory bodies all over the world where capitalist businesses are checked to ensure that they don't uh, enslave the people. But in Nigeria, the government is actually encouraging the capitalists to, uh, to, you know, to deal with the people. Mm -hmm. And we have representatives who we are supposed to... Uh, have our collective interest at heart. They are not doing it. Mm. So they can initiate recourse. I mean, the constituencies can initiate recourse. It is a part of the democracy. It's in the constitution. Uh, so, but uh, the problem is that the constituencies are not even united. So when you come to the constituency, so oh, this person is from our village. This person is from my yeah. town. Oh, Sentiments. you are jealous. You are jealous. Mm. You are do this. And uh, it's from my church. It's from my mosque. It's from my group. And at the end of the whole thing, Bukhara. so it, it seems Nigerians are not even hungry enough for um, hunger to unite them. They are still, uh, they are still having premodal mm -hmm. sentiments there. And when you start having that, that means you are still comfortable. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure a lot of people are comfortable right now <laughs> because we're all not smiling. Yeah, I'm not sure it is. Well, we, we know the prices of goods and services. We know what we're buying fuel for. So it's just that we obviously do not want any social unrest, which is one of the things that the House of Reps have even spoken about, that this um, um, fuel price hike might just even cause social unrest. But I, I want to understand the honors, you know, as we even wrap this up, the honors of the Senate, because it seems like they've forgotten what their role is, what they're supposed to be doing. Um, it's not just to go there and say, you know what, well, we want to splurge and buy 160 million Naira SUVs. They are there to represent the people. But let's talk about policy alignment, because they are the ones who are supposed to be bringing policies to ensure that this nation is moving forward. So if we're going to be looking at the policy alignment between the Senate, the, that's the you know, legislative now, and then the executive, what are they supposed to be doing harmoniously to ensure that Nigeria moves forward into a progressive nation? Why would recognize that this uh, uh, legislature is supposed to also admit uh, the executive? Yeah. They are supposed to work together in harmony. Yeah. But working together in harmony does not mean that uh, agreeing to everything. You know, this statement of the Senate President, when it was made the Senate President, even that of uh, Senator Ahmad Alawan those days, he said, oh, anything the President says is okay by us. That is not your duty. Yeah. You are not uh, an appointee of the government. You are not appointee of the executive. You are a government, you are a government arm, just like the executive is a government arm. So you are supposed to discuss policies before they are being implemented. How many times was the Senate uh, briefed when fair prices were, when the policies for fair price increase was, uh, was, was uh, you know, uh, taken up? Mm -hmm. When electricity was, uh, tariff was, subsidy was removed. Well, almost all subsidies were removed. Well, there a discussion there. So, uh, the, so we can see that the Senate has reduced it, itself to an errand boy to uh, the relationship between the Senate and the presidency is like um, a servant and master relationship. We shouldn't be. And that is where the Senate has reduced itself to. And that is why people are, are picked by the actions of the Senate. And so um, for now, the only way that the Senate can remember that they represent the people is when the people take action by trying to recall some of them.
But as it is now, they are so comfortable that they don't forget that what brought them to Abuja in the first place was the people. They feel that uh, coming to Abuja was an appointment, and that is why everything they do is always centered uh, towards their own, uh, you know, uh, aggrandizement. And so uh, it is only the people that can secure that uh, mandate that they gave to these people uh, to the senators. If they don't do it as we are, as they are not doing it right now, and then the, the, the show will continue. Uh, the show of uh, hunger, the, the show of uh, inflation, the show of unemployment. The show of uh, lack of access to medic to Medicare, lack of access to food, lack of access to basic amenities, it will continue. And then more people are dying. There are people who don't eat now for straight four days, five days. It is prevalent. It's just that Nigerians are very resilient people and they keep quiet when some of this happens. Some of them are even ashamed to say it out. Some cannot even buy medication. The so-called people who think they are big men, they cannot even afford some things. Uh, so it, it, it is a shame that the middle class is being obliterated. Even people who can afford things, a lot of uh, parents now send their children to school without school fees just to get them out of the house so that the children will not be despondent. We see a lot of uh, students in higher institutions, they just give them transport money to come to school. School fees have not been paid. They don't have uh, pocket money. They don't have food. And so these are, the, these are the scenarios we have. And when you breed a, a generation of young people without any hope, then there is something uh, called desperation. And when desperation sets in, it's not going to be good for anybody. Hmm. All right. Uh, I hope that, you know, things get better. I hope that the Senate, they start to do their job, not just the Senate, the government as a whole. So the Senate, the um, House of Reps, that's the legislature, the executives, and obviously the judiciary, and even Nigerians as well, meaningful Nigerians, we all put our hands in the plow to ensure that we have a better nation for us. And if we're going to say, you know, we're the giant of Africa, we need to live up to that name. And we cannot be here discussing um, basic necessities. We need to find ways to be progressive and to transform Nigeria and hopefully that would happen soon. Dr. Ambrose, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure having you on our show. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Yes, have a wonderful day. We were speaking with I Dr. Do. Ambrose Igboke. He's a public affairs analyst and we've just been talking about what's happening in the Senate. Um, we'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing EFCC, which is said to be an unlawful organization, according to Ulisa Agbakoba. Please stay with us.